after I finished yesterday's radio program, I thought of the perfect country song that fits. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. I don't need chains or iron bars to tell me I'm not free. I'm in a prison without any walls. I'm living in the memory of a love that used to be here in a prison without any walls. And welcome to the Tuesday edition of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. A lot of things that I want to cover on today's program. Now, I do feel a little bit better than I did yesterday when I came before this microphone, but still not really where I need to be, but that's okay. We'll get there. But I do have a lot of my heart and my mind to share. Yesterday, I kind of talked about how we are getting in this world where where we're getting into a prison without any walls, and many people don't even see it coming. And a lot of young people who are so used to using digital devices and giving away their phone number, their information, playing little games on TikTok and Facebook. They don't realize that every time they do something like that, ooh, play this little game for free. Well, why would anybody want you to be playing a free game? How are they making any money off a free game? Who has the time to run the servers and write the software for all these free games on Facebook. People that are trying to mine additional information about you that they can now sell to other entities. And don't think that governments don't want a piece of that action if they can get it. We are imprisoning ourselves. And if we recognize that a lot of the things we do are monitored, they are surveilled, there's not a whole lot you can do about it, really, unless you want to live in the woods, unless you want to go totally off the grid, unless you want to, you know, hide for the rest of your life. It's just being a little bit more cautious on the things you do and the things you share. I I use Facebook because I have family, and it's also part of this ministry, and I'm now for the first time in a long time, we have opened a Twitter account to use in a limited basis for the radio program. It's just a platform for me. I'm not going to say a whole lot. I will let people know through, through Twitter that a new episode of the program is ready. And... I'm going to keep a low profile. That's the best way to put it. Keep a low profile. I I pretty much do the same thing with Facebook for this radio program. It's rather a low profile. It just tells you a new program is ready and an occasional update. In other words, I don't do anything there where the algorithms and the artificial intelligence systems that are in place, because look, it's not people reading this stuff and looking at it. It's all computers. And I know that from just certain keywords that I've played within my personal account to see what triggers the algorithm to notice something. Just certain words will trigger it every time. Certain words don't. And so you learn how to play their silly little game. And so we are beginning without realizing it, and especially those that are younger who don't have the idea of what real freedom is. See, the first step of having somebody willingly surrender freedom is for them to not even understand what freedom truly is. Freedom entails understanding personal responsibility. You cannot have true freedom unless you have personal responsibility. If you cannot be responsible for yourself, you are then dependent on some other entity, and that entity often is the government. So, become government dependent, and thus you give up some of your freedom. One of the greatest fights since the 1990s in particular, I know it's been around a bit longer than that, has been the concept of government 
operated and run health care. Other nations have done it. England has done it. United Kingdom. They have their, their NHS. And Canada has a socialized, government-run health care. Which, by the way, thinks that suicide is one of the greatest medical options you could come up with for so many diseases, including now mental illness. Yeah, suicide. MAPS. Medical-assisted patient suicide. MAPS also stands for Minor Attracted Persons. I mean, yeah, that term MAPS is getting used in a lot of places in government, of all things. But see, if you no longer have responsibility and things are done for you, you become dependent upon those that do the things for you, and you don't recognize in order to, it's the carrot stick approach. You don't recognize that you have surrendered freedom. And so that's what I was trying to explain yesterday. Many people are moving into a prison without walls and don't even understand it. A lot of younger people flock to the cities, to the San Francisco's, to where the the jobs in IT and the internet and social media are, though those jobs are dwindling because they were overvalued, overstaffed, and overrated for way too long. And I don't think any of those companies are worth anywhere near the numbers that are batted around. I think that Elon Musk, well, I think the stockholders there were laughing all the way to the bank for the money they received for that money just draining, burning corporation. Twitter has had not made any money. They were losing millions of dollars per month and nobody cared. And they had people running around doing little or nothing, making 110, 120,000 a year, drinking wine out of a vending machine for free, enjoying yoga classes and all kind of food and and little ways to hang out on the roof with their friends and little pods to have little discussions. They they had a wonderful life of being worthless and not doing anything except some engineers that had figured a way and a handful of people making the mega millions of dollars to suppress the speech of one political party and one ideology in preference to one that would rather keep you in bondage, keep you from the truth, and keep you ever dependent upon everything the elites want you to do. That's the world in which we live. And so our younger people are surrendering their freedoms every day. Now, do I have a smartphone? Yeah, that's what you kind of get stuck with these days. And I've used a smartphone for years. And I learned early on the things you do with a phone and the things you do not. That's simple. Especially on sites like Facebook and others. There are things you just don't talk about. There are things you just don't participate in. There are things you just don't say if you want to keep a low profile. But as I said, younger people, they'll, they'll say, give us your address and we'll text you. You know, Give us your phone number and we'll text you. Give us your email. Give us your this. Give us your that. Hey, take a picture of yourself and make it look like a, a doggy face or a little putty cat face. You just gave that company willingly a picture of you, a current picture of you. And before it's all over, as you answer silly questions, you have told them your life story, things you may have not even put in your profile. They are mining information about you every which way they can. They want to know about your personal and social life. The things you make public, the things you add are worth money to advertisers, worth money to corporations, and worth money to governments that want to have even more control over your life. And between both the fear of health and climate, the two biggies, and the ability to fend, you know, to be able to feed yourself. So we start talking about universal guaranteed income. 
You notice the left always comes with these wonderful plans of, we'll take care of your health. You never have to worry about that again. We'll take care of your retirement. We'll make sure there's a guaranteed minimum income so you will never go without the basics of life, including that cell phone and your big screen TV. You'll have enough to cover all of that. Yeah, your health, your retirement, your income. And we're going to change the way transportation is done. Live in the cities and we can get you public transportation. Then you don't have to worry about things like a car. And and what cars we'll have will be electric. So we can save the planet. All in the name of, of climate change. Climate change is both a fear and a pagan religion and you surrender everything of you to the state for them to take care of you it has been quoted and it's been said that benjamin franklin said that those that will sacrifice liberty for freedom and safety deserve neither and i tend to agree and here we are today looking at this world that is gradually slowly just tightening the noose a hair every year just a little bit more just a little bit more and as the last bit of true resistance the baby boomers and those that immediately followed that can see what is going on now many of them can't i would say uh roughly half of my peers maybe more they're happy to be dependent in their golden years. And younger people are more than willing to be dependent from the time that they are put into a public school, indoctrinated, and then sent on to a university to make sure that the indoctrination is permanent, life-lasting. And then we have political parties that have mastered the art here in the United States of voting, where the other parties have not. And let me explain. It's like I said, we have too many people that are conservative. Forget the Republican Party. I'm pretty much done with them. When Mitch McConnell is your Senate leader, the fake, phony, and fraud conservative that he is, I'm I'm pretty much, I know how many of them lied to us in the House that supported this new marriage bill that is an abomination unto God. It is just disgusting. It is repulsive. Marriage does not belong in the hands of the state. It was ordained of God. It came out of religion, for lack of a better term, for the masses. Marriage was never a state institution. It was always a religious-based institution. I don't care if you are Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, doesn't matter, Shinto. Marriage came from religion, never the state. So why did the state decide that it needed to get its, you know, grubby figures involved? Well, the left wanted to control every aspect of your life. They wanted to issue birth certificates. They wanted all of these certificates that are given to you by the state. You know, before 1900, you know what a birth record was? You know what a marriage record was? It certainly wasn't in the courts. It was in family Bibles and churches. That's where it was. If you wanted to get married, you went to your justice of the peace if you wanted just a civil contract, or you went to your local parish pastor, priest, rabbi, whatever, You could get married without a license in the middle of the night if it suited you and your pastor agreed, and he wrote it down in his book, not the state's book, and you were legally married, and the state had to recognize that your religious conviction for marriage was valid for you and your spouse. And the church controlled the rules of marriage until the state stole it and found a way to make money out of it and found a way to control you and found a way to 
demolish society in the process. Once again, a prison without walls. You can't even exercise your faith and the gift of marriage without the state's permission and paying them a fee to boot. We have a home in the state of Virginia. We're in the extreme southwest part, which is relatively conservative. Um, Country folk kind of like it here. But the state of Virginia has a requirement that I find highly despicable, unconstitutional, should never have been allowed to happen, but they got away with it. In order to perform a marriage in the state of Virginia, you must be licensed by the state. I've been an ordained clergyman for over 25 years, since 1996. January of 1996, I was ordained into the ministry. And I had a wedding to do for a family member that lived in Virginia that asked if I would come to do the wedding, which I was more than happy to do. So just to be safe, as I'm looking up the requirements on, quote, the marriage license and all the nonsense that goes with it, because I know that every state has got their own set of silly rules, states, silly state rules, silly unconstitutional, unbiblical rules, I found out I had to pay this huge fee to get a a lifetime license to do weddings in the state of Virginia. Well, in order to keep peace in the family, obviously I, I did it. But it bothered me. Why did I need to talk to the state to exercise my office as a clergyman? What does the state have to do with religion? I thought that we had freedom of religion to exercise it thereof. And the state would not be involved. Why is the state involved in a religious function? Why do they require even fundamentalist pastors, Bible-believing preachers and churches to pay homage to the state to be able to do a wedding? And we accept it as, okay, yeah, well, I guess we have to do that. Yeah, we got to do that. We got to, until the, like, 1900. It didn't exist in this country. But now it does universally across the globe. The state now has interjected itself in marriage, child raising, education. And the same state that wants to tell you about marriage and how to get a license and permission from the state to exercise your faith and religion wants to indoctrinate your children confuse them, and make them more dependent upon them. Now, there was some good news that came out of Loudoun County, Virginia, which had been one of those places that how do you put up with this? And the parents had been just beaten apart by the uber, ultra, demonic left that runs the schools in Loudoun County. And I'm going to say it. It is run by demons, not by humans. Demons control those humans that run the Loudoun County schools. And all their sexual perversion and lying, distortions, mandates, control. And if you dare complain as a parent, as parents have learned, they... They'll send it. They want to send the FBI after you as a domestic terrorist. Wow. Well, what Loudoun County did not that long ago is what turned the election in the state of Virginia in 2021. They have these off year elections for governor. And it was Terry McAuliffe that stupidly. And the man just is so arrogant and so full of himself. He didn't. He thinks that everybody believes and thinks like he does, especially in Northern Virginia, where many probably do, but the rest of the state didn't. And some of the state that may have not come out to vote, well, they did. 
when he said that parents have no business understanding anything that the, sc- the schools, the schools have the 100% right on what your children should learn. You, you need to get out of their way. Well, that didn't sit well, and that tipped the election, which then opened a little bit of a floodgate to start investigating some strangeness that occurred in Loudoun County. And the governor's office, through the attorney general, opened up a grand jury investigation. And their preliminary report came out last week, citing some terrible things that happened in Loudoun County. And and the stupid, idiotic Loudoun County School Board and their leadership, they they kind of praised the report saying, yeah, we had a bad egg here and we fired him. So, hey, but but isn't it wonderful that, you know, there was no criminal investigation. Ha, ha, ha. And they were bragging last week. I can remember it. Well, the investigation's done and there's no criminal charges. I think the reprobates in Loudoun County spoke a wee bit too soon about no criminal charges and bragging and and patting themselves in the back that, well, we had a fall guy. Yeah, we had to fire him, but that just puts everything behind us. Let's sweep it under the rug and, and nobody will ever, they'll forget. You know, the American attention span is so pathetic. They'll simply forget. And and don't worry, we'll be back in office. You know, we'll we'll stay in office because people in our county they just love Democrat policies. They love liberalism. They love leftism. Well, surprise, 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 as Gomer Pyle once said. The former superintendent. I think I mentioned this last week. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. I said, yeah, the grand jury gave you a preliminary report. But the grand jury has not yet been disbanded. In other words, they're still working. And, and I've learned over the years, having hung around this stuff a little bit, that grand juries meet for a long time. Not every day. They get together. So they may for a little while, you know, fade away. Then they come back and meet again. And, and be very cautious about thinking that their work is done from an initial report. They may just be beginning their process. This could go on for quite a long time. They don't get their work done in weeks and months. Sometimes it may take years. And so a, the former superintendent has been indicted on three misdemeanor charges by a special grand jury that is, they say investigated, I'm going to say is still investigating the response to two sexual assaults committed by a student last year. Because let me explain something. If something else is discovered in the process of that investigation, they just move on and start adding to their investigation other issues. So Scott Zeigler, the former uh, Loudoun County superintendent, is facing these indictments. And there's also a felony perjury indictment against the school's primary spokesperson. So the superintendent, Scott Zeigler, and spokesman uh, Wade Bard, this comes out of the release last week that showed how the school system in general, Zeigler in particular, for a lack of transparency and, and lying. And they believe that one of those assaults would have been prevented had officials actually done their job. And so I see some civil lawsuits. They're they're going to be seven figures. Trust me on this one. That school district is going to be out there begging for money to buy pencils and school supplies. What needs to happen, what needs to happen is parents need to go And the sheriff's office there had better get their act together and act like real law enforcement officers enforcing constitutional law, not this reprobate silliness that comes out of this sick, demonic school board. Parents are not the issue. It's the demons running your schools are. And if your sheriff is supporting them, then you need to get rid of your sheriff. Vote him out of office. Stand in front of his building. 
by the thousands and tell him to leave. You don't want him anymore. If you think there's any hope for America, it's not just in the ballot box. Because I really don't see a whole lot of hope there because they've learned how to stack it. Unless we learn how to stack it like they do. Vote early like they do. Cultivate ballots like they do. Beg people. Get them to sign their ballot. Take it in like they do. Don't wait to election day where they can make the machines malfunction, which they do. They have and they will continue to do because they know Republicans are too, oh, 1950-ish. I love Ike and we're going to go to the polls on Tuesday. If they can get their people to vote for a week or two or three and get all the ballots in before election day and if they can make sure you know that you don't get to vote, the lines are too long, the machine is broken, you get discouraged and you don't vote, they're going to continue to win. This is one of the problems we're facing. So I am thrilled to death that the grand jury passed down those indictments. And the, and the school system had sought unsuccessfully to quash the investigation, calling it just politics. No, these are criminals that are running your schools. Absolute, demonic, reprobate criminals that allowed a rape to occur because they are so into transgenderism. The boy decided he's, it's a boy wearing a skirt who raped a woman, a girl in a girl's bathroom. This transgender silliness is of Satan himself. It is not. I played it for you yesterday on this program. Let me remind you of what even the left believed not that many years ago. And I say the left. Mr. Rogers of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood was also an ordained Presbyterian pastor in what was a very, uh, shall we say, social justice oriented manifestation of the Presbyterian Church that began adopting many of the social issues and over time the social issues overshadowed the biblical principles of that church. It sounds like a lot of churches today, doesn't it? I will get into that maybe later. I've got some other other stories to share. But here's what Mr. Rogers said, and this is what the Democrats and what the liberals of the day firmly believed, even and actually most anybody else would believe the same thing. This is one area that it wasn't that many years ago, 25, 30 years ago, that the world, where the left and the right, the liberals and the conservatives would agree 100% with Mr. Rogers. Boys are boys from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Girls are girls right from the start. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, and so is mine. Only girls can be the mummies. Only boys can grow up and be the daddies. Yes, sir. Everybody's fancy, everybody's. Mr. Fine. Rogers has been gone for 19 years. And had he lived and was still saying that today, today's cancel culture, today's Facebook, today's Biden administration, today's health and secretary, you know, the health secretary, undersecretary, Richard Levine, who pretends he's Rachel, and other reprobates in the administration running around wearing dresses, pretending they're women and they're biological men. They are mentally ill or demonically possessed. They're sick. And I don't mind saying it. I don't care what you think of me. It doesn't matter. Look at these men. They are suffering some kind of demonic possession or mental illness. This is not normal. You can't change yourself by simply saying, I want to be a girl. And then have your body butchered, destroyed by hormones and things that are not natural to your body. We do know one thing about those that do make the transgender transition over time. 
they're more likely to commit suicide than those that decided later not to. You know, they, the New York Slimes, Times, Washington Compost, the, the CNN, and all, they, they don't want you to see the stories about those that did it and now highly regret it. They suppress that truth. Goes against the narrative. And so this school board in Loudoun County was so into this wokeness. Yes, let a teenage boy wear a dress who's still a boy, it's all in his head or mouth, or he's just found a way to be a pervert. That's what I think he did. There's no hormone blockers. There's no surgery. He just tells the school, hey, I'm a girl, and I've got a, I'm wearing a kilt, so I'm going to use the girl's room. You can't stop me. And two girls were raped. And the school tried to cover it up and lie. And if parents dare challenge the almighty, satanically run school system, they were considered domestic terrorists worthy of an FBI investigation. Now, the school board, in covering their god-awful tracks, they fired Ziegler when the grand jury issued the report. They should have fired Ziegler over a year ago when the truth had already come out. But no, they try to suppress it and deny it. Parents in that county, those parents where those kids were raped, not only need to sue the schools, but the school board individual members who knew the truth, suppressed the truth, denied them of their constitutional rights, And they need to pay a financial and legal price that keeps them from never getting near a school or a school child again. This started happening in May of 2021. And and what the administration did, they transferred the kid that did the rape to another school where he did it again. You know, even the grandmother warned the school board in 2021 that the child was a the grandchild was a sociopath he wasn't transgender he was a sociopath serious issues but the school in trying to be accepted and beloved of the demonic left the demonically inspired left considers raping of young girls acceptable collateral damage that must be hidden. If you don't think there is a satanic plan, if you don't think there is one, then you're deceived. We live in a very unprecedented time. And we see our governments pandering to sexual diversion, well, sexual deviancy. It's a diversion. i uh, I'm going to say this because we're running a little over here and I need to get to the break. This perverted government in Washington, D.C., this reprobate White House, reprobate, this is an abomination before God. This phony, rosary-carrying Catholic in the White House is a demonically inspired, hell-bound disaster, filthy liar, and, and a thief. And I still believe it was a stolen election. You can argue with that me all day long. You're never going to convince me that more people came out to vote for this reprobate, this bumbling idiot, this this 50-year government-entrenched fool. I'm just saying it as I see it. Who okay. sniffs girls' hair? I mean, the guy's a pervert. Showered with his kid, you know, with, with young girls, naked? What's wrong with this picture? But he's... He's supposed to be Grandpa Joe, you know, and he's got the best interest of our country at heart. He is sending us into obliteration and doesn't care. He's stolen enough money, he and his son. They'll do what they want to do. The media will give them a pass because they are equally a part of this satanic perversion and deception. There's a lot of work to be done in this country. And it's not just political. 
It's not just political. We've had all these, you know, we're fighting wars. We're having drag queens in libraries, but you can't talk about, can't have a Christmas tree there. It might offend somebody. Oh my God, a Christmas tree. Somebody might be offended. What about that dude wearing a dress, being sexually, shall we say, twerking in front of little kids? Oh, that's not offensive? And we're supposed, we're the bigots for saying, for calling that out? It's a sin-sick world. Now, like I say, I'm running over here. And I want to thank all of you that support this radio ministry. Like I say, I'm having, you know, bet, today's better than yesterday. It's, I, I can tell as I'm doing this program, I'm a little weak, but we'll, we'll get through it. I thank you for your prayers. I can't wait till we get into January and the second surgery, and hopefully that will put this issue to bed after a period of recovery where I can feel a lot better again and do the things that need to be done. If you believe in this ministry, would you consider your financial support? If you would. By the way, you can support us from our website, truththenumber2ponder.com. Truththenumber2ponder.com. We use Give, Send, Go, which is a Christian organization and it has worked wonderfully for us. I do not use PayPal or a lot of other places, so we do use them. And I'm looking even down the road into a few others that might also be good, that you can have a choice. But if you prefer just mailing a just regular check or money order, our address is very simple. Make the check payable to Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio. The mailing address is Post Office Box 510. Post Office Box 510. The city is Chilhowie, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowie, Virginia, Chilhowie, Virginia, and the zip code in Chilhowie is 24319. That's a 24, a 3, 1, 9, 24, 3, 1, 9. And we will be right back. We're going to change gears, and I think you're going to enjoy what we'll be talking about next. This is Truth to Ponder. With Bob Bierman. Israel's national symbol in a moment. Shalom Alechem. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out. I'm receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. America not only has a flag, but a national symbol. The symbol for America is the bald eagle. Now the nation of Israel also has a symbol. It's the menorah. You'll see it in front of Israel's building of parliament on every national seal, and it's from the Bible. Israel's symbol is the seven-branched lampstand found and described in the book of Exodus, the lamp that stood in the holy place filled with oil and kept burning and trimmed by the priests, the golden seven-branched lampstand, the menorah of God. Why is that the symbol for Israel today? Because Israel was called to be a light to the nations, a holy vessel filled with God's oil and shining with his light, the light of his presence and his salvation. What does it have to do with you? Everything. You see, whether you're Jewish or not, Israel is your nation. Because the word of God says that you are now a fellow citizen in the commonwealth of Israel. If you're born again, you're an Israelite. And if you're part of Israel, then your national symbol is the menorah, the holy lampstand. Why? Because God's nation is called to be a light to the world. And every citizen of this holy nation, this Israel of spirit, is to be individually a light to those around. So the holy golden lampstand is the symbol of your nation and of your citizenship and of your life. Are you living a life worthy of that symbol? Is your life a light to those around you? Well, the lamp couldn't be a light on its own. On its own, it was empty. It needed to be filled with the oil and the fire. You're God's holy lamp, but you need to get filled and refilled. Get filled up, my friend, with the oil of his spirit, the joy of his presence, the bread of his word, and the fire of his will. Be the light you were called to be, and all things shine to people all around you. Shine. It's your heritage, and it's your national calling. Want more? Ask for the automatic menorah. Now, here's some free, wonderful gifts for you. Sapphires, the super spiritual supplement, help turn your walk into a super life with God, and the incredible mystery of the temple doors, all free. You'll love it. How do you get it? Just remember Jesus' Hebrew name, Yeshua, and dial it. That's it. Just dial Dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. You'll get the free gifts. Call now. 1-800-YESHUA-1. 
I invite you to join with me in the Great Commission to bring salvation back to the Jewish people and to reach millions of unreached peoples around the world on five continents. Just call now. 1-800-YESHUA-1 Y-E-S-H-U-A-1 Or write me direct. The Nice Jewish Boy at Box 1111 Lodi, New Jersey 07644 It's Box 1111 It's in Lodi L-O-D-I New Jersey 07644 Well, till next time This is Jonathan Kahn saying Shalom Aleichem Peace be to you, my friend in Messiah or Haolam, the light of the world. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our Tuesday edition of Truth to Ponder. And I'm your host, Bob Bierman. You know, I was going to mention in the first part of the program one little story, actually a couple, but I may not get to it all. But my take on yesterday's arrest of the crypto kid, Sam Bankman-Fried in the Bahamas. A lot of people are saying, yeah, look, yeah, they're going to get him now. Yeah, 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 here we go. The timing to me is rather suspect. Once again, the reprobate government and the Department of Injustice under reprobate Garland, under demon-possessed Garland, political hack Garland, the timing to me is extremely suspect. Notice that Sam Bankman-Fried was on a a Zoom conference with a New York Times book event defending himself. And he was going to appear today, Tuesday, before the United States Congress via a Zoom call from his stately condo with the most beautiful ocean view and all the yachts parked in their private harbor. Instead, he's arrested. And that that hearing that the general public could have seen and hear, heard is now canceled. I don't think the government of the United States wants anything to get out about Sam Bankman-Fried or his leftist university parents that somehow also seem to come up with millions upon millions of dollars. And Democrats got millions and millions of dollars even in this last election cycle. Just a minor question. Where did $32 billion go? It just evaporated into thin air. It's gone. Either that was the world's greatest con and Ponzi scheme. And it was part of a money laundering operation that has roots all the way into Ukraine and other places. No, it's not just Ukraine. By the way, it's always amazing how the same people that are all, you know, hoorah for Ukraine, Russia bad, understand that the Russian collusion nonsense of 2016, 17, 18, and 19 was a big fat lie. And those that told the big fat lie are still running around pretending they're congressmen and moral and decent people when they are nothing but filthy liars that should be in prison for sedition and treason. And Russia bad. And and the same people that are suddenly supporting Ukraine and hating Russia that realized it was all a hoax to begin with, it's the same people pushing the same narrative. Be careful. Ukraine has been a cesspool of demonic and evil activity for a long time. It is where money laundering has become a <laughs> has become an advanced art. It's where many People in United in the United States and in our government have made tons of money, including the Biden family. And so we're supposed to believe Russia bad, Ukraine good. It's too simplistic. Ukraine winning. I'm not so sure. I'm not going to get into the politics. I'm not going to. I'm not defending what's happened there. I'm not defending Putin in any stretch of the imagination. But. The same media that lies to you on one thing, what makes them true about this one? And that includes Fox and Newsmax. 
that also are just the loyal opposition news. Not all of it, but a good part of it is. It's part of the good cop, bad cop to keep you in line system that we have in our our world today. All right, enough about that. You know, I, I can only deal with so much of this bad, strange, weird news before it just wears me down. This morning I was greeted by an email, and you want to talk about something that made my day. And don't know why. I don't even know where it's going to lead. I really don't. I wish I did. And, and this came to my Truth to Ponder mailing address, and, and it go, and I'll, I'll kind of share the exchange that goes back oh, a year and a half, in some cases two years, a conversation that was kind of started a long time ago. And this person writes, and it's, he's from a ministry called Least of These Ministries. His name is Dale Long, and I'm sure that he will not mind me mentioning what I'm going to talk about. And he goes, hello, Brother Bob. And I hope you don't mind me calling you brother. I know you are, and he talks about my clergy status and everything else. That's fine. You can call me Bob, Bishop Bob, Pastor Bob, Brother Bob, just plain old Bob. Just, talk, just don't call me late to dinner, Bob. He writes, it's the middle of the night. And I'm thinking of Haiti, and for some reason, I felt led to write you, and I have no real reason. Shortly after my last message, and this message is like over a year ago, like a year and a half ago, I did go to Haiti, and 10 days after my return, there was a major earthquake. It demolished the guest house we stayed in a few days earlier. And 20,000 people died, including some of our own. The epicenter was in the mountains where all our staff were born. So we were uniquely positioned to help and being small and agile was to us an advantage. So we dropped everything and sent all, sent all the money we could for relief efforts. Franklin Graham's group showed up a week later. It took them some time and and other organizations to understand that mountain folk are different than the city folk they're used to dealing with, like in Port-au-Prince, and they were going to need a distribution plan. Our staff, our ministry, did remote broadcast. They have radio ministries, by the way, I'm going to talk about in a second. And, And those mountain churches, and we knew the mountain trails and goat paths and the pastor's. We also had a couple of off-road capable vehicles, just coincidentally, by the providence of God. And we, we we are still remembered for our early relief efforts in that area. Then he writes, but Christian broadcasting is what we do best, I think. And we have many needs in Haiti. But we are fortunate to support a Haitian organization that is completely led by Haitians. However, the dangers have vastly increased and nothing is safe. People are living in fear and there are incredible fuel shortages that have shut down hospitals. This makes our investment in solar the last 10 years look pretty good. But some of our inverters are beginning to age and there's always a need for batteries. Then he starts asking about some stuff that I have been involved with years ago in the Caribbean. And the question is, and this is what he writes me. And I can hear some of you right now that I know that are that have become good friends and we communicate from time to time. Is there anything we should be doing together? And somebody's probably saying, Bob, you got enough on your plate. As I said before, I really don't know why I'm writing this message, but blessings to you. And then he writes, signs his name. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing to help them, but I know it's something. I have had a burden for the Caribbean for a long, long time. And it goes back way back when. It's it didn't just happen in the last five, six, seven, ten years. It's it goes back around thirty. Thirty some odd years ago, I knew very little about the Caribbean except what I had seen in like advertisements, you know, come visit this, that, or the other. And, and I never had any desire to go there. I just didn't. My life was pretty, well, settled. 
And, you know, maybe someday I'll go visit some resort if I ever was wealthy enough in the Caribbean. It just never was something on my radar screen. Until one day, back in the 1990s, I had been working for a transmitter manufacturer for a number of years, and I took a job with a Christian college to develop the radio ministries. But for a, for a long time, I stayed working as a consultant and also part-time for my former company, a transmitter manufacturer and broadcast equipment you know, manufacturer. And, and every once in a while, they would have me come down to their, their factory and spend maybe a few days or a week working on some projects. Maybe they're getting behind, they need an extra set of hands and eyes, they're having issues, or they have some unique problem in the field. And so I got a call one time asking me if I would go down to Jamaica now, remember, I had left. I'm now working for a Bible college, and, you know, I'm happy. I'm actually getting ready to start studying for the ministry. But I made the trip to Jamaica, and it was not to – I flew into Kingston. So I'm not going into the, quote, resort city airport that most people go to. I got to see how the real people lived. And then we drove into the night to a small town called Mandeville, where I stayed, and then I worked on this transmitter site for a couple of days to get them finally on the air. And and I felt something in that trip that has stayed with me for all of these years. There is this literal spiritual warfare that I felt in Jamaica. On one hand, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit. On the other, I felt the rising power of demonic presence and a collision course, and bad theology, and everything that goes with it. And it kind of sat inside of me for years. Had to go to Puerto Rico one time. Even though Puerto Rico is still, quote, the United States, some of that same spirit just permeates the Caribbean. I dealt with pastors in the past within my own church body that I supported and my church body and my own, my own congregation supported in Haiti. And I knew the challenges they faced, but I saw the incredible results they got with so little. American churches could learn. They have so little, they have to depend on God. And I was moved. I've traveled to other places, including St. Kitts and, and, and Nevis. And I've had a burden for that place for years. I'll I'll just say this. I'm not going to get into it today. Maybe I'll have the guts to get into it later this week when I have the time because I can look at how much time is left. I worked for a unnamed ministry. I think a lot of you can figure it out that was supposedly given a radio station in St. Kitts that we're going to put it on the air. That was seven years ago. They've had it for like 10 years and it's all overgrown, not on the air. Oh, they've had all these breakthroughs and I made a trip down there with the with the head of that ministry and a bunch of others. And it was a lot of talk, a lot of travel, a lot of looking around, but nothing got done. No real work was done and ever has been since that I'm aware of. I've tried to inquire and nobody seems to know. And people that supported that are pretty well told to shut up and sit down. I want to know where the money went that was raised for that project. But, you know, A, You know, the Holy Spirit changed his mind. I heard that from that ministry one too many times. That's why I'm not there. There is a friend of mine that has a little radio station, a little FM, on the Isle of Nevis in in, uh, in Charlestown. Has limited coverage, and I I try to advise him. I actually host and, and help him with his website. They even air this program on the weekends. And that's another place where you could tell at one time it was a stronghold for the people of God, yet that demonic spirit is trying to get in there as well. I don't know what it is about the Caribbean, why this is such a battleground for the demonic versus the spirit of God. I don't get it. And why it could be in my mind 
And, and I'm going to include Belize in this as well, even though it's, quote, mainland, not an island. You know, it's still right there at the Caribbean. There is something about Belize. There is something about Jamaica. There is something about all the islands in the far eastern Caribbean. Haiti. All that area. Puerto Rico. Dominican Republic. There's something about that, and I need to know why. Look, I will do my job in planning some churches. I I hope to get a small church going here. I've got a young man that I think might be a person I'll call in a year to come here or less to do most of the work and give me a platform to preach and record, help others in their endeavor to build a church. But radio is still one of my primary outlets. It's always been a part of who I have been for over 50 years. Ministry has been half of my working life. Radio has been all the way through. I've done both for 25 years. And I want to continue to do it. I'm going to reach out to Dale, Dale Long. I'd like to have him as a guest on my program. And, you know, I I think... It's too easy to sit and complain about this sin rotten world around us. It's an easy thing to do. You know and I know it. It doesn't take a lot of effort. And I, and I, I don't even have to go to half the 90% of the stories that are shared with me. I don't even touch. Number one, I can't vet them fully. But the ones I can are bad enough. So I don't need to get into ones that may or may not even be true. The ones that I can see are bad enough. We're not going to win at the ballot box. We're only going to win in the hearts of those whose lives have been changed by Jesus Christ. My hope is not in the kingdoms and powers of this world. It's in God, his people, his church, empowered by his Holy Spirit. I'm in this world. I am not of it. Too many people that claim to be conservatives and Christians are so into this world. They're not just into it. They have become of this world thinking that they're going to fix it for Jesus. And there'll be no need for him to come back. There is almost that mentality out there. I hate to say it, but it's true. And so for me, I have to look at what God is calling me to do. And this is where I need your prayers, not just for my health. I'm trusting God on that. But how do I use all that I have learned over my life, at this stage of my life. I need to be passing things on, training people, empowering people, keeping this voice alive as long as God empowers this voice. And that's why I come to you each and every day with the same little request. Would you consider supporting this ministry? I've got a couple small things I'm working on in the background. Once I get them done, they'll probably take care of themselves with some extra little help from a few people. Same with churches that get built. I don't plan on running them all. I plan on getting them started and doing another one. Same with radio. You know, there are a lot of ministries that want to build stations in the United States or even in Africa or all over the place. I I feel the the, the need to stay on short wave, number one, and maybe do something in the Caribbean. But if you believe in what I'm doing today on this program, would you consider your support? Make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. That's Ancient Word Radio. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 510. That's Post Office Box 510. The city is Chilhowee, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowee, Virginia. That's Chilhowee, C-H-I-L-H-O-W-I-E, Chilhowee, Virginia. Zip code is 24319. That's 24319. 24319. You can also go to our website to support us. There's a way to do it there. Truth, the number two, ponder.com. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, truth, the number two, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to Ponder, shining the light of truth 
in a darkening world.